suppressor size and weight are largely misunderstood or an underappreciated aspect of the what can works best for me equation. Generally, as a rule of thumb, the larger the can, the better it will handle heat and the longer it has to slow down escaping gas at the barrel. It does this, however, at a cost, making your weapon system either unwieldy from a weight or a length standpoint. Conversely, shorter cans or Kurtz cans, K cans for everyone else, are on the opposite side of the spectrum, usually heat up faster and struggle to suppress escaping gases as well. There are quite a few nuances as well as some exceptions to consider before picking out the best can for your use case. Here's our data-driven discussion about when you should get a K-Can or when you should supersize your suppressor. But first, here's a quick word from our sponsors. Vortex just added a new solar-powered closed emitter version of the ST to their Defender line of micro red dots. Like the rest of the Vortex Defender line, the new enclosed ST features a constant on emitter with no flicker and shake awake so it's always ready. It also doesn't drain the battery in daylight and has a convenient side-mounted battery. Find out more in the doobly-doo. So the first thing to consider is heat. Why would I care about heat? Uh, cans get hot, and normally you're not touching your barrel, but the likelihood that you're touching this thing that's hanging out in front of your handguard is pretty high. Uh, within a handful of rounds, this already becomes, with most cans, uh, unable to touch or unable to handle. Secondarily, you also have Mirage. If you're trying to take a really, really accurate shot out to distance, uh, unmagnified, it can really be a problem. Uh, magnified, it gets even worse, especially if you have a really large can that is kicking out a lot of heat. The other big discussion to have about heat is going to be thermal and IR signatures. Now on the thermal side of the fence, I am already a big glowing glow stick of hot, especially compared to my environment. So a can getting hot may be less of a consideration, especially because it's something you can mitigate uh, with something like a cover. Uh, but the IR signature can be problematic. If you're dealing with somebody that has near peer capabilities or night vision, as everyone else would like to say it, these gave off a ton of IR light when they got hot, the smaller the can got, the more it gave off because the hotter it was getting, uh, and there's not a real good way to mitigate that. Uh, even with the unaided eye, when you have a big forbidden popsicle standing out in front of you, it is going to be very hard to hide from somebody when this is supposed to be aiding you in that concealment. And for you kiddos who are thinking, well, I have a cover, so I'm covered, your gas tube on your free-floated handguard is going to get you killed just as much as the next person. Uh, we would see on some of the better performing cans that the gas tube was actually brighter than the suppressor was, kind of illustrating the point of why sometimes those larger cans do better in concealing your position, if that's something you care about when it comes to heat. So how do I keep my can from getting hot? The easiest explanation I can give you is typically the bigger the can gets and the heavier it gets, the more material is going to be present. The law of thermodynamics explains that if I have less metal getting exposed to the same amount of heat, it's going to heat up faster. The more metal, the longer it's going to take to get to the same working temperature. The other way to cheat this is heavier material. I have an example here of an Inconel can, which is a more dense metal. Stainless steel also falls under this property. Uh, titanium goes in the opposite direction, but generally the heavier it is, the denser it is, the more it's gonna resist that heating effect, with some exceptions. If you wanna know a little bit more about materials and how it affects the properties of the can, go check out the video that we've already done on this where we go into a little bit more detail. The wild card in all this discussion is going to be coatings. Uh, we've seen this already with bolts, we've seen this with barrels, but specifically with suppressors, there's been some dramatic shifts in performance uh, when it comes to what they're using both internally and externally in the can. B&T is the easiest example I can give you where they used titanium, which is lightweight, on a relatively small can that has reduced back pressure properties on it, but it performed hundreds of degrees cooler than it should have, given the other testing that we did, because of the coatings that were present. It both prevented the can from getting hot and prevented sparking from happening, which was very common in titanium cans. So it is something to consider. Since we're on the discussion of reduced back pressure, one of the caveats you have to think about is the better it performs in reduced back pressure, typically the worse it's going to do in heat resistance. The reason being is that they're typically increasing the surface area inside of the can by using complex geometry to try to disrupt that air, and in doing so, you're reducing the thickness and the heat resistance of that design. It's pretty cool because your gun's going to operate a lot better if it's a gas gun. Not cool if you're trying to keep the can cool. 
The next really large consideration you have to take into account is going to be caliber selection. If you already have a gun that you're trying to suppress or you're trying to build a suppressor host and a suppressor setup, caliber is gonna be a big deal. The reason being is there's only one thing that a suppressor does and that is handle the gas escaping the muzzle. It cannot do anything about that projectile once it leaves the firearm. So there's two types of rounds that you're gonna run into here specifically. There's going to be the supersonic or faster than the speed of sound and a subsonic, which is slower than the speed of sound, which is right at around 1100 feet per second. Once it goes faster than the speed of sound, you're going to get a supersonic crack. That crack is incredibly loud and is going to defeat most of the energy and work that you are doing at the muzzle end. If it is subsonic, it is actually gonna be pretty cool and as close to Hollywood quiet as you could possibly get. So if statistics serve me right, most of y'all are going to own AR-15s, and most of those AR-15s are going to be chambered in 223 or 556. That is a naturally supersonic round, and collectively, I think we all understand, really sucks to suppress. It, it's just simply not gonna be quiet. Uh, any, any round that's gonna be supersonic, you're just gonna have to mitigate your expectations for it. I do understand the school of thought that says, well, screw it, I'm just gonna go with a K-can, it's gonna take the edge off of the sound that I'm experiencing as the shooter, uh, as well as cut off a little bit of the flash, a little better than an A2 birdcage can, especially more consistently. Conversely, something else you might look at is going to be uh, trying to get as much performance as you can out of it as you shorten that barrel. I understand both schools of thought. You're not really ever going to get 556, 308, 65 Creedmoor and rounds like that to be hearing safe. There might be some claims that they are. I would be leery of that. Uh, but you can at the very least mitigate some of the effects you're going to have on the shooter, especially when you're shooting in a class. Uh, but most of this is kind of where the K-can starts to crush because it's reducing the length you're adding to the weapon system as well as the weight. Where the suppressor discussion gets really interesting is when you start talking about subsonic rounds. Typically, these are often gonna be heavier, especially when you look at subsonic capable rounds that can do both super or sub, or naturally subsonic rounds, similar to like 45 ACP, that are well under that 1100 feet per second, making their flight perfectly hearing safe if you can make the blast from the muzzle quiet. Here's where these really large cans start to make a lot of sense. Uh, and what's really nice about these is they typically also utilize shorter barrels, making you not have a too unwieldy size of a package when you're utilizing a bigger can, but you're also getting all of the real benefits of a suppressor in an actually hearing safe setup. Over the past year, we've shot thousands of rounds through dozens of cans and the data was pretty clear. On average, the smaller the can got and the lighter weight it got, the hotter it got, and the converse was true, where the larger the can was and the heavier it was, the better it handled heat. Obviously with caliber considerations, that's gonna tell you which is more desirable, but in general, the consensus outside of something like BNT, where there's an exception because of coatings, um, that's gonna be the case. Depending on your weapon system, that's gonna probably bias you on one side of that spectrum or the other, because one is gonna be your preference. As always, your desired performance is gonna be based off of characteristics that you want out of your gun. Generally speaking, the smaller the can and the faster the bullet's going, the louder it's gonna be, versus the slower the bullet's going and the bigger the can, the quieter it's gonna be. As a tried and true cheat code for the people that are already in suppressors would tell you, if you have a 30 cal can and you're putting it on a 30 cal gun, especially if it's subsonic, it's gonna perform incredibly well. And since 556 already kinda sucks at suppressing, you can cheat and have a two for one setup, where since it's not gonna be that quiet anyways, who cares that it's not a dedicated setup? It's just nice that you get to save a little bit of money have a little bit of compatibility across your weapon systems. If you're not new to suppressors, I'm probably preaching to the choir, but if you are new, you gotta mitigate your expectations. Understanding that the smaller your can gets, yes, it's very rad and lightweight, but it's likely not gonna do very much in, as far as sound performance, but if I'm shooting in a supersonic round, who really cares? Versus when you're trying to go and get a really cool and actually hearing safe setup, you're gonna likely have to go with a bigger can to actually get that at the muzzle end. Hopefully this data helps you make a more informed purchasing decision and we didn't get lead poisoning for nothing. Um, I understand these devices are very expensive and still possibly gonna stay on the NFA. So we tried to make this easier for you guys and it was really based that a lot of these companies subjected themselves to this testing so that we can be more transparent with y'all. If you already have some really cool builds or have questions about the suppressors that we talked about here, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. Try to answer all of those if we get an opportunity to and then go check out our write-up in the forum for this. We're also going to share our data for testing in case you are an inquiring mind trying to purchase. Uh, but if anything, support the companies that are supporting your right to the Second Amendment, because without them, we don't get any of this.